Karsh, am I audible? Please confirm. Hello, sir. I can hear you. Hi. How are you? I'm good, sir. How uh, are you? I'm good. First of all, hearty congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Very happy for you. And uh, <laughs> And I hope uh, those who are in the session, uh, please confirm once, am I audible? Uh, I believe, uh, okay, okay, thank you. Thanks for confirming. Okay, uh, so to introduce you uh, to all uh, is Mr. Utkarsh, uh, RNA rank 78, UPSC Civil Service Examination uh, 2022. And I also am very happy uh, to, you know, to be part of his success journey wherein is part of our, I remember, I think he approached us uh, for this mains test series 2022. And um, I remember he telling that, uh, I think it's it's his final attempt if I'm not wrong. Isn't it, Utkarsh? Huh. Absolutely. Mine was a very special kind of a case. <laughs> yeah, this was my last <laughs> attempt, but so first attempt with anthropology. That's and true. He, yes, and he's one of the very few aspirants who have subscribed to this test series who has completed more or less... Um, uh, all, all the tests, like I think most of the tests he has attempted and even I was very hopeful um, about and very positive about his result that he would definitely get an interview call, not just an interview call. Uh, now he is sitting before us, uh, you know, with, with, with a massive success, if I may call it that way. So without wasting much time uh, by once again congratulating him and inviting him to this uh, discussion. So yes, uh, welcome Utkarsh. Um, so I would wanted this to be, you know, like uh, more of a question, question and answer kind of thing, so that it will be uh, more directed and specific. And if the end, if you have time and if your time permits, uh, you can also take questions from the students. So on this note, uh, the first question from my side, uh, yes, uh, give me a brief of your preparation journey, which is what uh, you know most of the aspirants uh, would generally be interested in knowing. Yeah. Uh, well, firstly, sir, thank you so much. Uh, just let me know if my voice becomes inaudible because I'm using a, an old kind of a headphone right now. So just let me know if uh, anything uh, goes down. But uh, thank you very much, sir, for this uh, opportunity. And uh, to talk about uh, my journey uh, in brief, well, my journey actually started way back in 2015-16. That was the time when I actually started my preparation. And uh, there were lots of ups and downs. Uh, I I qualified in my first attempt. I got Armed Forces Headquarters Civil Service, but I didn't join. I continued working as a software engineer. Then after that, again, went for three more interviews, but never got never made it to the final list. So then at, at one point, it seemed like uh, SA was taking me out. Then in, uh, in another attempt, it felt like interview was taking me out. Then when both of them became good, then history optional. My optional was history. Then history optional, suddenly uh, the scores reduced. So it just felt like it was a never ending, uh, uh, you know, it, it would be a never ending journey wherein uh, probably I, would, I wouldn't be able to achieve what I had set out for. But uh, yes. This was my last attempt. Finally, after five attempts, I decided to change my optional and give it one more try. And uh, it worked. It's so it just feels a bit surreal. And uh, the the it's such a but such a long journey, especially to the aspirants. I can tell you that uh, you know whatever journey you have, if you are preparing for it seriously, uh, you'll come out on the other side a lot better or a lot stronger than uh, you would had you not undertaking this journey at all. So to everyone, just, you know, keep going and uh, hopefully everything will turn out fine. Yes. Nice. nice. It's, it's really inspiring because, you know, uh, these days, uh, Utkash, often uh, I hear students uh, just, uh, just after that second, third attempts coming to me and saying, so we are really exhausted and we have so many pressures upon us. Um, then I then I out of uh, you know um, curiosity I asked do you have any financial issues or do you have any health they say it's not about financial issues it's not about any health issues it's just that uh, you know they don't have sufficient energy to take things forward so somebody like you yes. I you also remind me of Chaitanya uh, our twenty twenty one ranker she also has okay. got it in the final attempt and. Uh, uh, she also has done it with anthropology and I kind of really appreciate her uh, for her, uh, you know, the patience to, you know, to 
to to believe in her instinct and you know stay till the final attempt and coming out so so here here i would definitely like to add one thing i think uh, mm-hmm. yes financial condition and mental health these are very like just health not just mental health but these two are very important things so but as long as aspirants have these two going in their favor i think the most important point for any aspirant is what are the reasons for them to get into civil services why are they giving this exam you know it doesn't have to sound great to other people but as long as it is strong enough for them i think you should not get into this exam if you're not yourself convinced as to why you want to be a civil servant it's as simple as that so uh, if those reasons are strong enough you will one attempt goes down two attempt goes down but somehow those reasons will give you the energy because like like you just very very rightly said sir you like the aspirants you speak to they say they're out of energy let me tell you sir when when i gave my first attempt i was completely out and i said i can't give any more attempts and then one more attempt came and then one more attempt came but and every time i was out of energy every single time i told myself i can't do it again i hope this is it i hope this is the last attempt and yet when the results came and i did not get through it is that it is it, it was those very reasons that somehow made me somehow i gave myself time and those reasons were strong enough that i got i got back up and i could again take the gather the energy to to give it one more time so mm. this is the most important thing for aspirants i think that you know just make sure that you that you have very strong reasons and if you have very strong reasons and everything else is going your way just just keep giving you know because uh, it one way or the other you'll you'll be happy you know once you once this ends yes. i think you're also an iitian and these are the times where in the iitians are uh, you know uh, starting all you know big startups and starting uh, and becoming unicorns and and in in such a times and you know spending uh, time and believing in this process and hoping for a positive result it requires Uh, in my opinion you know a lot of persistence and mental strength I, i'm really uh, happy <laughs> thank you sir thank you very much and and but yes there, there were like any other aspirant there were lots of phases wherein i went through a lot of frustration and there was so much you know uh, difficulty in balancing i was working as well so sometimes uh, i'd feel like gs was being missed out because i was studying a new optional and uh, and sometimes i wouldn't even be able to give enough time to optional so i think these are all very normal stages that every aspirant every serious aspirant goes through so you know it's just about just keep giving your best and let's just hope it uh, it makes it yeah i can empathize with you very much and uh, and just curious why did you even choose anthropology as your option subject that to in your final attempt uh, what made you think <laughs> about anthropology uh after giving five attempts in history optional uh i had done a lot of calculations in my in my first attempt that why what what optional should, should i choose mm-hmm. and i thought history would be my life saver so by the time i gave my five attempts and i realized that it was actually history which had actually taken me down in the last two attempts i realized i don't care about anything else i just want a subject that will give me marks that's all and, you know i i will study whatever i need to study but uh, so when i saw i wanted an optional which gave me marks then there were only three four optionals in, in upsc which are famous now like political sciences there anthropology is there sociology is there so it was about choosing within these three four subjects and uh, for anthropology i chose anthropology because i found it interesting a little bit interesting more suited to my thing because maybe from my uh, from from the time i was a kid you know i i like studying this this biology side of it genetics somehow i didn't ha- i didn't uh, have a problem studying all of these points and uh, second thing was that uh, there was a very good connection with my history optional in, in the archaeological anthropology part so oh. i felt somewhere i could maybe leverage that that and most important point was that uh, in uh, the 2020 exam of civil services a friend of mine i would call him my brother he got 87th rank so mm-hmm. i went and i asked him that i am very confused can i take anthropology and he said you can do it with anthropology take anthropology mm-hmm. so because you always look for people who you can trust in in this mm-hmm. journey we all as aspirants we all look for people who we can trust and who can guide us so for me he turned out to be that one person who could uh, guide me so because mm-hmm. of these three reasons basically i wanted an optional which want which had which could give me good marks mm-hmm. and uh, which uh, i felt i could study you know which which seemed interesting so these two were the prime factors yeah
Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, like, uh, did you face any difficulty in the preparation, like while you are preparing for the anthropology? Though it is not very unfamiliar to you, but still, definitely, it's a new, new uh, discipline or new subject for you. Yes, yes, absolutely, sir, absolutely. And uh, I would say it was very difficult for me because even though there's some connection with history and archaeological anthropology and genetics, etc., is interesting, but in the end, nobody would know that better than you, sir. Anthropology covers everything under the sun about humanity, so it's just about studying so much. And uh, the difficulties that I faced was there is no one book which can tell you that okay, you read this and your anthropology option is done. Anthropology itself is so varied. You have different subtopics. For every subtopic, there there are so many reference books. So for me, uh, given my time constraint, the biggest difficulty was just being able to figure out what resources to read, mm-hmm. and uh, and also in anthropology option, I'm seeing there's a problem of plenty. There are so many resources available. Mm-hmm. So for for a, for a, for an aspirant like us, for a normal aspirant, what do we choose from all of these resources? Mm-hmm. because we don't want to do a phd also you don't we, we just want good content so what what sources do we refer to so for mm-hmm. me the biggest difficulty was just being able to get the right resources and even more importantly since i had only one attempt i had no other attempts left so for me in this one attempt the biggest challenge was not just to get to the level of uh, get to the level that every other serious aspirant is at but also go a little get a little bit better than the crowd so that my answers can stand out better and i can get better marks because in the end it's the answers that matter that we write in the exam so it was not just about getting the uh, getting the knowledge but also the most difficult part was ensuring that i'm able to write good answers which mm-hmm. are maybe just a little bit cut above the rest so mm-hmm. that became the the biggest difficulty for me because there was so much time constraint so <laughs> yes <laughs> very interesting hope i am not too critical when i have validated your copies because yesterday one of the <laughs> students who subscribed to our main test series she was saying sir you are a little bit uh, too critical then i have sent you your copy uh, look <laughs> i was more cr- uh, critical <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, no, anyway. absolutely no no absolutely sir actually the thing is uh, you know uh, i will come to it later but uh, since you already raised, raised this point you know uh, it was it, it when you want somebody to be as critical as possible you want somebody to show you the mirror so that you can see what are all the limitations especially for for, for someone like me who had only one attempt left i just had uh, i just needed someone who could tell me what was wrong and so it always makes uh, a big difference so uh, yeah it's fine uh, i mean th- it only helped me so no problem uh, with that okay. and because these days like you know everywhere especially the tendency of the the beginner aspirants one it is to read some topper's notes means they are not putting effort to make their own notes hmm. personally i have an opinion that notes need not essentially mean a handwritten notes for me notes is something which is uh readable uh, easily comprehensible and wherein from so from that particular source you are in a position to easily replicate the same on your answers i want uh, i want you to throw some light or your views on this idea of notes taking because there is a lot of buzz built around it and it's like this every other student uh, like i think some toppers uh, apala mishra they are they are downloading her notes putting that as the base notes and they are passively reading from it uh, in this process they are not getting exposed to how to write a good introduction how to write a good conclusion because that would have worked for her because she has written down on her own effort with her, with her own efforts so i i wanted to clarify you know or throw your views on all these things yes you simply have to make your own notes there is no escaping that because if you're reading somebody else's notes it's their notes they have organized it in a way that they felt it was most comfortable for them to revise in the end you uh, you know we as aspirants we have to understand that you have to be in a position where you can not only revise in the last month you know your anthropology syllabus at least once or twice but also in the last week you have to be able to revise it well if you're only going to refer to other people's notes you can never uh, have a collection of points in uh, which is the most comfortable way for you to read right so the point is if i am referring if i have some 10 5 to 10 notes other people's notes or other people's books and i and whenever i have to revise i'm referring to that if i have to revise the same thing in one week 
again i'll have to go through those five ten points again i have to go through those you know those those same number of points i have to go through those same number of resources but if while studying from some and some for, from somebody's notes if i'm just picking out the most important points and i'm making my own collection it becomes my own collection and then the reason how it helps is how it helps us the most is that it just becomes it goes into our memory right it becomes our own collection of points and we have that freedom to organize those points in the best way we feel is comfortable like for example if somebody feels that okay they have understood the concept but they are not able to remember the scholars related to that particular so for example let's talk about village studies and in village studies there are so many scholars there you know there is mn shrinivas and world sc dubey and world uh, pauline kolanda iravati karve so for for someone else it's probably the main challenge is to remember the points that village studies what is the for somebody else the challenge could be okay i would just want to remember the scholars so Th how the other topper has done it that was that, that is the way that it worked for him or her but civil services preparation you have to have your own notes wherein you're able to customize it in your own style and you're able to do it in your own way so mm -hmm. there's no they cannot there, there can be no second uh, there can be nothing second to making your own notes you simply have to do it mm -hmm. and uh, how you can do it like you just said sir like it's not just about pen and paper the biggest point is that one more thing how notes making benefits is that when you are actually making writing down a note you you are eventually your mind is thinking whether it's a re relevant point or not so that indirectly also makes you refer to the syllabus and the previous year questions because those are the best resources for us to know what is relevant and what is not relevant so uh, so that is how it should start the note making first we need to look at the previous year questions and the syllabus this should be our holy book for every serious aspirant the previous year questions and the syllabus so mm -hmm. once we know that then the the next the next point becomes that we break down every topic into a set of question and answers that we feel is is going to be most important mm -hmm. right so that way like i'm pretty sure if somebody has seen the previous year toppers notes uh, that is being shared they have also done it in the form of question and answers because it's the best way you know is for a, for an option like anthropology where the syllabus is quite defined they've given very very specific pointers mm -hmm. it becomes very important that uh, that you you write your notes in question and answer format so mm -hmm. so i would also recommend the same if not in question and answer then at least mentally they should be able to analyze that okay fine from this this topic these are the possible questions and they can mm -hmm. restructure their notes this way right mm -hmm. so so just organizing it and and finally what how much how much notes do we make that is also mm -hmm. one more point like i mm -hmm. said earlier it's not about getting all of the content about it in the end maximum that can be asked is 20 marker uh, 20 marker question so we need to be able to just uh, you know make sure that we have 300 to 350 words of good content for a particular topic mm -hmm. so these points i feel are the most important when we when we are making notes and even more importantly what do we write in those 350 points you know mm -hmm. we need to have a good uh, we need to inter uh, we need to mix those notes with scholars case studies mm -hmm. so um, and you know any current affair related development like for example in uh, let's say phylogeny the phylogenetic status of neanderthals if some new study comes out then just taking note of that study and adding it in your note mm -hmm. these are the ways that we need to actually start forming our notes wherein so what happens in the end is that when the exam actually comes we we already know because we ourselves have written these points and we have organized it in the way that we felt is more important mm. and we are able to revise it because it's our set of notes mm -hmm. so this so there so no doubt so there's no second uh, option to making notes we simply have to do it okay okay i got your point and uh, though i have asked this question other way like what are the difficulties you have faced during your preparation there is another finer aspect any mistakes like uh, it's it's very normal for us all to do certain mistakes during our preparation of course this optional and not just is optional this exam has rewarded you with the best it can <laughs> and you you got a rank below 100 that's not a small feat or not a small achievement still i believe uh, there could be some some mistakes which you have committed which you might have thought if had i not committed uh, is there anything as such yes definitely sir uh, if the notes that i made <laughs> to be honest uh, they were very bulky so uh, so towards the end it became a little difficult for me to be able to uh, revise it properly mm -hmm. 
that mm. was uh, that was one that was one issue that i felt was there mm. uh second thing was uh, that i made digital notes because mm. they worked worked for me but mm. digital notes uh, may not be the ideal choice for everyone and mm. i can think of a few reasons why like for example when i was actually revising in the last week mm. i realized that when we actually write something with pen and paper mm. right when we write something with pen and paper it, it actually goes into our mind like we can actually remember the the points that we wrote it gets it somehow gets registered in our mind but with digital mm-hmm. notes that impression on mind is very weak right mm-hmm. so so i think that uh, if i was giving another attempt and uh, and i did not get the rank that i wanted i would have probably written down a few important topics with pen and paper or a few revision pointers very crisp notes in pen and paper just so i could you know be able to revise it properly a very simple mm-hmm. example is diagrams mm-hmm. diagrams when we make it in our uh, with our own when we have our own set of diagrams we 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 can very easily revise it we have our very very crisp set of notes that mm-hmm. that cannot be replaced by digital notes so mm-hmm. i so i felt that you know to every aspirant i just say that uh, see what works for you the best don't mm-hmm. just go with the fad of digital notes it's very good mm-hmm. i also use digital mm-hmm. notes but mm-hmm. maybe even even me who is so uh, who has based their entire preparation on digital notes even with that i made sure that you know diagrams and all i was not using digital notes for that i was making it with my own pen and paper and while revising also i had so make sure you have a good combination mm-hmm. other than that i think uh, i i don't recall any any other such mistakes but yes <laughs> and because uh, you we are saying the students were coming to me for mains examination this year i'm i'm suggesting this and because previous year also i suggested to some of you guys and some of them told it worked i'm suggesting this memory notes memory notes in the sense like you know putting a dedicated book people whenever they write this short notes for recollection they do it with a small blue pen in a small font uh, the, the mind does not work like that right it wants everything colorful you know that visual memory or photographic memory i believe it's very powerful so if they write it in big font you know uh, like it could be one fourth page or half page in different colors keeping different mnemonics maybe some weird diagrams or weird uh, you know uh, linkages to certain things which like maybe maybe a movie or maybe a character these little little things you know i believe would add uh, would take off that stress of memorizing things and people would focus more on concept understanding is what i believe yes absolutely sir the, it's like you said it's about putting the pen on paper and it's also okay. because when you put the pen on paper like and uh, taking in your point that you write something big or you write it in different colors it directly mm-hmm. i've seen that it, it has a very strong link with mind Sure. which which is lacking which is not there so for example if if i write something with with pen and paper and mm. uh, i revise it twice my mm. personal experience has been that the same thing if i do in digital notes i might have to revise maybe 10 times to actually get the same amount of memory uh, you know in build mm. so mm-hmm. but then again there are advantages with with with, digit, with digital notes you can easily edit and add etc cut mm-hmm. copy paste it's much less and it's you mm-hmm. can uh, it's much more you can access it anywhere you know with just mm-hmm. one eye uh, with just one tab or one laptop or whatever mobile so mm-hmm. yes definitely i completely agree with you sir uh, you we must not forget the way of pen and paper and you and you know capitalizing on the way our mind works especially mm-hmm. after we read the anthropological theories <laughs> you know so <laughs> yes and uh, another uh, eternal question which students even who who would have written 3 4 mains with anthropology as optional they would still have what sources to read <laughs> so uh, i tell you, like we have to tell it with at the same breath which we tell to beginners uh, to the seniors also because i personally believe it's not about uh, it's not sorry i think i, I got interrupted um and it's no not problem. about the it's not about any particular source it's it's about trusting on one source and revising it repeatedly later adding on points to it from different sources but uh, i want uh, you to throw your opinion on this so what what are the sources you have referred to during your preparation journey and uh, any other suggestions regarding this sources or gathering of sources because in this ai era there is no dearth of information so something uh, you know from your side will definitely of help to students uh about the sources like you mentioned sir uh, there's a problem of plenty there are so many resources like you just mentioned but uh, and also we must not just get lost in those resources like i said it's not about getting a lot of points 
when when we study something it's about getting the required number of points and then moving on to the next topic so we can focus on every topic properly mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. the uh principle that i followed was mm-hmm. i will have one base note for mm-hmm. every topic i would have one base note and then mm-hmm. on top of that i would refer to maybe one or two more sources mm-hmm. and even while referring those one or two sources i would not read everything word by word i would just scan mm-hmm. for uh, some new points that are, that had been missed out in the main source or mm-hmm. some diagram or some scholars some scholarly points whatever it was so mm-hmm. my, uh, so my view was that or my approach was that i'm whenever i'm studying a topic i'm not just going to base it on one because sir in the end we have to also keep in mind that anthropology has become a very competitive option Uh, mm-hmm. every a lot of students are coming over here so so it's not about reading we cannot just be content with one source anymore that is what my understanding has been True. so i would suggest everyone to read two to three sources not go beyond that because we don't have time also for for anything beyond mm-hmm. that and mm-hmm. uh, maybe if somebody feels not comfortable then maybe they can check it out but other than that two to three sources should be good enough and uh, mm-hmm. about the sources that i referred uh, it's a very for every topic there's a there were different sources but i think if i can just mention the the most important sources that i used then uh, for me it was a combination of epgp which is that uh, e part shala and uh, ignu and uh, ember and ember and peregrine the that book that gave that book uh, is excellent for getting case studies and examples and and for also for clarification of concepts so that for uh, anthropological theories i used gayan upadhyay mm-hmm. uh, that was one more and uh, physical anthropology p nath was mm-hmm. uh, was another reference book i referred paper 2 mm-hmm. nadim hasnain uh, mm-hmm. was uh, was book and let me just clarify yet again when i'm referring when i'm mentioning these books one by one it's not about reading them word by word it's about looking at the syllabus looking at the previous year question papers looking understanding what uh, what is important and then going to those specific pages and reading just that and then moving on so it's not about uh, finishing one book properly and then going to the second so uh, so the main point is read that book extract the important points embed them into your notes and then mm-hmm. forget about that book because the important points have been incorporated into your notes next time when you are revising just look at your notes and you'll be done and mm-hmm. and that is then that is why and that is what i mean when i say that you simply have to make your notes because first time it will take a lot of time but second time onwards when you revise it really saves a lot of time we don't have enough time when uh, towards the end when we have just one week to revise the entire concept so so again uh, so this is how i how, how i use these resources and uh, in addition to that i had taken uh, online coaching so i i had my own online uh, coaching notes uh, right that was one and uh, toppers the previous year toppers i felt mandar patki's notes i do not i do not know apala mishra's notes because i haven't referred to them how they are but uh, mandar patki's notes who is a csc 2019 topper and mm-hmm. uh, sachin gupta's notes who is a csc 2017 topper mainly mandar patki's notes they are also mm-hmm. they are all available for free of course they have, the toppers have released their notes they i felt uh, a combination of these was what i used to formulate my own notes other mm-hmm. than that uh, paper 2 the kaka report kaka committee report for for tribal india i feel everybody mm-hmm. must read that yeah i i mm-hmm. i know that there are a lot of websites that give small short points but mm-hmm. uh, if somebody does have points if, i mean if somebody does have time if they can just scan through the report quickly i think that will be very it will give them a lot of confidence also so one is yes so uh, so i read that book uh, i read the, that report completely Mm-hmm. and uh, finally but not the least this is something that i learned from the topper of csc 2020 uh, mm-hmm. googling and researching not spending a lot of time on google but just picking up those topics which are very current oriented or which can change uh, where developments can happen over time like for example genetics mm-hmm. uh, or some some new technology emerged in forensics which is there in applied anthropology or if mm-hmm. some uh, some fossil something related to a some new fossil has come up neanderthal some new development has come up anything related related to evolution some new finding has come up or even for tribal india part if there is some new case study that that depicts how tribals were impacted in some developmental project so i have a feeling that if we can just google and we can fig- find out some very recent case studies mm. they add more impact than say a case study which happened maybe 20 years ago 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, and normally when we read all these resources, we see the, uh, the conventional resources, we see that the case studies there are still a little old. So if we can mm-hmm. just make that effort and extract one or two case studies, which were, which are more recent, that can help in making your answer stand out from the rest. The, the, you, the, the examiner will be like, okay, I've never read this case study. Okay. So let me read. And it's a very recent case study also. And you can mention some good points that will capitalize. So this online Googling part is something that I did not a lot, but a little bit mm-hmm. for, uh, for just to be able to add that tinge in my answers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And another question, Utkash, though, this is not uh, specifically uh, directed to, uh, because in your case, uh, you have come to anthropology optional uh, after attempting with another optional subject. But this is this this one I want you to answer, keeping in mind a beginner like who has started his preparation okay. for the first time. So when should they start taking their answer writing seriously, according to you, so that it will you know maximize their uh, possibilities of clearing the examination at the earliest? Uh, in the end, every aspirant must remember that their marks uh, that will be given for firstly interview fine interviews marks count okay but in the end it is the means which uh, which determines your future and uh, when the examiner is looking at your answer sheets they will not care about what your personality is how hard you have worked in the past they don't care they don't know and they don't care also they only see what is there in front of them which is your answers so answers have to be given a huge amount of importance right from the start now having said that any aspirant cannot start writing answers from day one why because to write answers you need some knowledge first so i would suggest that uh, let them you gain like for example today if uh, if an as- if, a, if an aspirant of anthropology has studied let's say um, you know evolution uh, studied evolution or studied some uh, say homo homo erectus then what they can do is they can go to the previous questions and they can see what kind of questions were uh, came from homo erectus topic and then after they feel that they have read all the resources related uh, related to homo erectus they can attempt a question mm. so this is how they can start mm. this is how they can start and uh, they can maybe write one question per day that mm. is how they can start slowly and then they it should not just be just writing they also should look at the answer mock answer copies of toppers because mm-hmm. we are writing in our own style which is fine but uh, but if we look at the toppers answer copies we realize what must what can fetch you good marks like how mm-hmm. they can introduce diagrams where we didn't even think it was possible mm-hmm. or uh, or you know that uh, uh, maybe maybe you can get some good points also some good scholarly points which were not mentioned in, in our notes so mm-hmm. I feel that once somebody studies a topic, they must try and attempt an answer, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, a previous year question, not just any question, a previous year question. And mm-hmm. then they must also try and compare uh, how they must look at the writing style of, of the answer of the toppers, not blindly copy them because I'm seeing that in UPSC, everybody's style is accommodated. Mm-hmm. So don't mm-hmm. force yourself to, to write like somebody else. If you're more comfortable mm-hmm. writing, say paragraphs, then okay, fine, write in paragraphs. But mm-hmm. you can you can always, if you feel that there is some good point in some other toppers copy, you can always embed them into your, into your overall style. So mm-hmm. answer writing doesn't have to start from the first day itself. Read, understand the topic, become confident in that topic, and then attempt questions. Mm-hmm. But once prelims is over mm-hmm. in that three month period between that three month general period that you have between prelims and mains mm-hmm. answer writing must become a huge prime concern you must every we must every day write at least one hour you know i would say dedicate 40 to 40 minutes to one hour to answer writing mix your answers you know do however you want whatever makes you feel comfortable give three hour answer uh, test copies also if you want but uh, during that three uh, that three month period answer writing must take your undivided attention before mm-hmm. that you can pace it as per your own uh, as per your own comfort and your own knowledge level mm-hmm. yes sir. Okay. next uh, this question though it is uh, to this particular session i have invited primarily the beginners uh, i have not okay. invited the mains going students okay. but uh, I, I later told them that i'll be sharing this recording uh, okay. because i wanted you to uh, address a little bit more detail uh, what specifics can be worked upon to enhance answer writing skills in anthropology means examination? Okay. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, like I said, 
answer writing is something that has to be our prime concern so in the end our aim must be to make sure that whatever answers we are we are writing somewhere we are able to make them a cut above the rest whatever the usual points that everybody writes we must also write them but we must also always actively try to incorporate something which will make the examiner uh, take note and say that this is a this is a new point which is which i have not seen in other copies mm. so so how how do we do that so my take on answer writing is this that firstly we need to constantly improve right mm. so everyday practice is a must this is something i've already mentioned mm. other than that i the second point the second basic thing that i that everybody must try and practice is the structure even if mm. you're not writing when you're studying a particular topic mentally imagine if a question is being asked mm. not every single point but how would you structure that uh, the answer to that question for mm. example if uh, if there's a question if there's a 10 marker asked on uh, let's say marriage and live in relationship there's a 10 mm. marker asked so mm. everybody knows what what is marriage and everybody knows the basics of live in as well but mm. how would you write a 10 marker using these two topics if you can just structure them okay fine maybe uh, mm. you can we can show that what are the what are how are the two connected or how what is what are the differences between them maybe mm. incorporate a few uh, supreme court judgments which were given on uh, live in relationships maybe mm. uh, uh, you know give uh, or talk about how marriage is now slowly preceding or how, how live in is preceding marriage uh, you know how first live in happens and then it ends up in marriage so it's just about structuring them mentally you know mm. that can also really help one uh, ensure that they good that they write good answers mm. so so it's not just about writing it's also about thinking all the time when they are studying a particular topic mm. uh, having uh, the, an, another point is like i mentioned it's about making your answer just stand out from the rest for for uh, for this point what one can do is they can use scholars mm. introduce some scholars somewhere maybe mm. if nothing else then introduce a theory if mm. uh, let's say you're talking about um, anything let's say again uh, um, kinship so maybe everybody everybody is talking uh, giving some points if you can introduce some uh, uh, theory perspective like functionalism how is uh, or maybe even introduce structuralism it will and you mention the scholar mention the name of the book the year in which it was published when the uh, when the examiner looks at that it gives the impression this is a serious aspirant it is a it is someone who's actually taken the pain to to remember all of this and to actually to give a very authentic note on kinship so mm-hmm. scholars case studies and um, theories mm-hmm. diagrams like a very simple example for diagram could be see we all uh, as aspirants we all can understand how we can use diagrams for archaeological anthropology we can draw tools and and we can do in genetics also we can show uh, diagrams but for something in socio cultural anthropology like for example little traditions and ga- and great traditions Hmm. there also we can introduce a diagram we can show we can show a cycle we can show that the upward process is a universalization downward process is parochialization so just a simple addition of diagram like this can always enhance the value of our answer mentioning hmm. uh, you know robert redfield or whatever it is just making sure that we are that we are doing whatever we can to enhance the value of our answer hmm. so diagrams is another question uh, is a, is another point and one hmm. more point is i mentioned is current affairs Well, if we if you are able to get a study, a case study that we have seen from uh, that we have ourselves gathered from a research article, nothing better than that, mm-hmm. because not mm-hmm. a lot of people do it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and I have actually shared this um, in my Telegram channel also, wherein I had mentioned that when I just tried, I thought I thought it would it would be very difficult, but uh, I, when I went to the internet and I was trying to gather some some value addition for. twin studies and pedigree analysis so mm-hmm. because i i was seeing that every resources is mentioning the same thing so when mm-hmm. i went to the internet i i tried googling i found some two i found two very good research articles mm-hmm. which uh, uh, which actually talked about uh, how pedigree analysis was actually now being used to identify cancer risk mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, pedigree analysis is now being seen uh, you know it is going beyond mendelian uh, mendelian traits we are now mm-hmm. it can it is be evolving to to go beyond mendelian traits so this mm-hmm. is a good point that i used in the answer 
Similarly, mm-hmm. similarly for twin studies, which showed, uh, which gave a very recent example of uh, how to estimate schizophrenia. So mm-hmm. uh, when I when I when I, I I myself gain more confidence when I'm writing this, and yeah, answer also stands out. So yes. this is one thing, and last and the final thing that I'll say: every aspirant needs to have a separate section wherein they are making a collection of value addition material. Mm-hmm. they are making their notes it is fine but mm-hmm. for every topic they need to have just a one page or half a page note wherein they are only scribbling the name of scholars or important case studies or just some current affair related topics and how can current affair topics can be uh, incorporated in the conclusion they can be mentioned uh, that now some new development is like this so i feel that every every aspirant needs to make a separate section for every topic they have their own notes good but in addition to that note there has to be an an extra half page where an only validation is uh, uh, material is there current affairs examples scholars the case studies thinkers anthropological theories connection mm-hmm. this can be just revised before the exam and even if you you forget a very important point if you are just able to add something from these value addition collection the examiner mm-hmm. will be happy Mm-hmm. so this is what my idea has been about about how they should approach answer writing because answer writing the your answer how your answer will be it starts way beyond way before you actually start writing answers right oh, so uh, mm-hmm. so you we need to make sure that we have good good, good amount of material we are practicing and we are mm-hmm. using good points in those answers Mm-hmm. I have just an add-on question to this, Ukash. Yeah. Though uh, this comes naturally, writing a good introduction and conclusion, and it often becomes very difficult to teach someone how to write a good introduction and conclusion. And do you have uh, any specifics wherein you can suggest people that they can do so that they can actually write good introductions and conclusions? Uh, well, I don't have any such particular pointers, but my idea was that. Um, introduction has to be very simple that is what i have seen like if there is some concept that has been asked if we can just break down what is being asked and show it in the introduction i mm. felt that, that that could be a great way because that is a good way to let the examiner know that you know this term properly right mm. so uh, let's say that if and also you can also start off with defining what is being mm. asked so if there is a question that is talking about um let's say um you know kinship or let's say it's talking about um, uh, tribe caste continuum so how how would you define that that is uh, so for me introduction was simplifying it defining it breaking it down and just showing to the examiner mm. use and by when i said defining it i don't mean that defining it your way uh, use scholars use mm. use uh, use their publication tell mention which year and mm. uh, if if possible make sure your definition f- suits the context because there are mm-hmm. lots of definitions that uh, that scholars have given different ways of dif- tribes have been given such so many definitions so what definition suits or will be the best here if you can uh, suit that to the demand of the question perfect and mention the scholar so mm-hmm. so in the introduction simplify it use definitions and um, that was the approach i followed so one mm-hmm. more thing was that i used to give two definitions if if mm-hmm. there was a top if there was a concept asked um, marriage kinship or whatever mm-hmm. i would just give two definitions two two definitions of different scholars just to show mm-hmm. that you know i know that conclusion mm-hmm. conclusion used to be very uh, again depends on what is being asked i used to sometimes talk about um, like let's say there's a question asked on harappa uh, ivc indus valley civilization or harappan civilization so in conclusion i would try and give what are the elements of the civilization that continue till this day that we can see in today's civilization mm-hmm. so like for example uh, marshall had suggested that uh, the proto shiva so we can say that mm-hmm. shiva was probably you know something that that has continued even to even to this day we use yeah. dice chess which was invented in ivc so we can show that in you know indian civilization even today incorporates these elements of of harappan civilization so this is continuity another mm-hmm. example is like i said if it's phylogeny you, we can always mention the latest development that okay fine the, the as per uh, in in the least in the latest times this research article mentions that you know this is the current phylogeny status of this more mm-hmm. research is needed so this is one more way so another way is uh, talking about the relevance of this concept in in today's mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. right so relevance of the concept 
some anything mm. critic so there are uh, it it very really depends on what is being asked and uh, and just being able to this is uh, since you have raised this point sir i feel it is very important why that's why i said it is very important for students to actually mentally analyze how they should answer a topic mm. when they when they are when they are mentally analyzing how to structure the question they will realize that okay fine maybe in conclusion actually, actually i can write this so what to write in conclusion among between relevance continuity etc etc Mm-hmm. the the constant analysis that goes on in your mind that will tell you okay fine for this question you must write continue it mm-hmm. you know for this question you must write relevance that is the best way so it will it will be it will depend from question to question yes okay i got the point even uh, i'll just add this i'll not take much time uh, i believe it's a total it's a kind of shift in the preparation attitude which students should bring general tendency of the students when they are reading introductions they will not read with full consciousness and they while reading body part they will be fully conscious ah. and they have a tendency to ignore reading conclusions and you know will will be in a hurry to move to the next talk yes so the the whole preparation idea itself it's not taking introductions and conclusions seriously and you just practice 20 30 introduction conclusions i don't believe it will come overnight yes when you are reading yes. something when somebody has written a script when he has introduced it introduce it he would have yes. definitely you know uh, try to give a context of it or historical background of it cultural background or anything he would have right. given some background of it and when yes. he is concluding he would have concluded it by linking it to some other topic he would have in the conclusion he would have summarized the topic or in the conclusion he has reinforced the theme again all this exercise any random person writing any writer would have done this so i kind of suggest to students students like it should be a change in the attitude while you read itself so it will automatically get reflected in writing a good intention and conclusion yes yes absolutely and just to add on to that sir like i said in the end nobody knows how hard you have worked you must have you might have worked very very hard but in the end the examiner who's who's going to re- mark your life they only see the answer so there is no there is no scope of you to to uh, answer the introduction or conclusion carelessly you have to fight for every single word that you write every single where well, you know you have to just make it as content rich as possible whether it is introduction or body or conclusion your from the first word itself you are <laughs> you are being rated so do not neglect introduction <laughs> and conclusion very well said and and because how many tests you have taken the previous year uh like pre arts test in anthropology if you can also tell in general studies um I, I, before i come to that i just want to make one point that which will actually mention how it is important for aspirants in my first mm-hmm. two attempts uh-huh, uh-huh. I, i actually gave more than 60 603 art tests mm-hmm. 63 hours more tests. than 63 hours test and okay. the reason why i'm mentioning this is to uh-huh. tell every aspirant please don't do that <laughs> you know uh-huh. please don't do that because what i realized is that 3 months we have 3 months we can not every single second in those 3 months is very important mm-hmm. and we must give 3 hours test but we should also not overdo them yeah we must not you- overdo them Yes. Definitely. So, so this was something I learned the hard way, and I want to tell aspirants: do not fall, do not uh, make this mistake that I made several for several years. Mm-hmm. So, it, towards my final attempt, the number of tests I gave went down to maybe I think in GS I gave around uh, eight to ten tests. Mm-hmm. I think eight to eight to ten tests I gave three R tests for GS. SA I gave around five to six tests. Mm-hmm. and uh, for optional i gave because it was my new optional it was a new optional for me i was a bit uncomfortable so i wanted to write more i gave around 6 mm-hmm. to 8 tests for optional mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> yes this was what i gave and i feel that it's not about see we need to write three hours there's no doubt about it because we have to write it and we have to write it in an exa- an exam environment because that is how we are going mm-hmm. to write but because we are short on time Mm-hmm. we have to maximize our efficiency so i feel that towards the end especially we are writing test we'll we'll somehow with these limited amount of 3 hour tests also we'll get into that shape that we can write something we can write a paper we can finish it in 3 hours we can get that okay. even by writing 15 20 tests okay. but more important is using that saved time to mm-hmm. revise again and again so if we give mm-hmm. through many, too many 3 hour test we are losing out on the time to revise the content and okay. if we are not revising the content we won't remember what to write in the exam hall and that will cause greater damage okay but not to contradict you kash don't you think all the efforts which you have put in the previous efforts of writing so many tests 
that yes. would have not translated into your ability to complete the paper on time no sir i don't because uh, because mm-hmm. the point is when i am while i'm reducing my tests uh, the number of 3 hour tests i give mm-hmm. like i said before we must make sure we are answer writing we are writing answers daily mm-hmm. there's there's a difference between the two mm-hmm. we must not we must never stop answer writing Mm. when i when i say that don't give too many 3 hour tests i'm not saying that we must stop answer writing we must mm. daily answer right and that's why i said dedicate at least 40 minutes to 1 hour to answer writing mm. uh i gave so many tests what i mm. and the, what i realized is that after a point you reach that stage where you can complete a paper in 3 hours now after that even if i gave 120 tests also it would have still been the same so mm. what i've realized is mm. as long as one is writing answers daily Mm. sincerely mm-hmm. and giving 20 to th- uh, you know 20 to 25 3 hour tests mm-hmm. you will reach that level now okay. here uh, now here what what one can do is they mm. can try and challenge themselves more by mm. maybe writing two tests in one day mm-hmm. okay. right mm-hmm. so they can customize it in this way but mm-hmm. i feel that because see sir in the end i i wrote a lot of attempts that's why i got in but if somebody the, everybody wants to clear it in this attempt that's all mm-hmm. whatever is there mm-hmm. so what is the best so what what is the best way i i feel that the best way is make sure you're revising a lot of times i can i feel that this is the most important thing i know a lot of people who did mm-hmm. not write a lot but they were able to revise they wrote excellent mm-hmm. points and they got through uh-huh. and they, they don't even complete their paper in, uh, completely they maybe write 18 questions 17 mm-hmm. to 18 questions but, but they have good content and and they, so content is the prime concern so okay. uh, so revision must take precedence but mm-hmm. yes you cannot mm-hmm. neglect answer writing answer writing has to be done every single day between mm-hmm. uh, that that gap of that gap between prelims and mains so okay. but even if you are writing 20 25 tests you don't you don't have to have a fear of missing out that oh i should have written more tests i in my experience it's enough mm-hmm. 20 to 25 tests coupled with daily answer writing it's good enough mm-hmm. okay okay so any other suggestions uh, regarding uh, you know any generic suggestions that you want to give to aspirants out of your experience or uh, anything else you want to share with them uh after spending all these years in uh, in upsc i have seen that uh, <laughs> it's it's just about keeping faith in yourself you you just you know if nobody else to every single person who's on this call mm-hmm. um just to let you know there were a lot of times where um, i got low scores in mocks and no, i'm not just talking about anthropology anthropology was a new option so you can even you can just forget about that like i was anyway i was not doing well there but even mm-hmm. in gs a lot of a lot of times i got low scores there were times of frustration but I, whatever people whoever loses faith in you you cannot lose faith in yourself because you mm-hmm. simply have to be your own hero you have mm-hmm. to keep supporting yourself you have to you have to get through this phase and you have to give it your best because if you're not giving it giving it your best you yourself are limiting your chance of getting whatever rank you can so mm-hmm. my my first generic suggestion is i know it's very hard i know the competition is brutal but don't give up because i am the prime example for that mm-hmm. i got horrible scores and there were times when i when i questioned if 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 it would ever happen i would used to see topper talks and and i would think that maybe it will just be a dream for me and and it will just you know go away like that i had only one attempt left and it was a new optional but yet in the end it happened so the do just don't give uh, don't lose faith in yourself point number 1 point number 2 is play smart you can it can it could be your first attempt or it could be your last attempt play smart do not try to cover everything perfectly you know if for example if you are studying anthropology try to have a realistic target okay fine you know i'm going to cover maybe 85% syllabus i'll cover properly and at least 85% maybe for the remaining 15% i have some bare minimum notes that i can use in case a question is asked so play it smart it, use your strengths and weaknesses analyze yourself because you have to make your own strategy nobody can understand you better than yourself so uh, so my my uh, my suggestion to you is understand your strengths and weakness based on that use your time wisely uh, 85% syllabus if you're able to cover looking at the previous year questions and the syllabus i feel that is that will give you a good enough chance and uh, 
there will be time where you where you may not do well in mocks there there may be times when when there will be a lot of pressure on you uh it's okay just just withstand and and, and know that all of this if you take it positively if you take it constructively it will make you a stronger person and i think that that is the most important thing because in the end life is much bigger than any other exam nothing matters more than your life and your health and you know what what you and you matter so so that's the main point you know always remember that uh, life is much bigger so use that fact to reduce the stress take some time off go regenerate yourself but remember why you are here so that you don't get lost you know keep keep reminding yourself why you are here so that so that energy that motivation is always there right mm -hmm. so in the end i'll say that yes i i got lucky you can say my hard work was there but also luck also got me till here luck does play a role in this exam but remember i think it was thomas pain who said that that you know i am a great believer in luck and i find that the harder i work the more i have the more i have of it so everybody just remember that just keep doing your work and uh, one way or the other it will make you a stronger person and you know it uh, everything will turn out just fine so just keep working yes. and on, it might seem personal but it, it, it is at, at, at these kind of platforms these kind of things has to be addressed i believe what worked for, more for you according to is it your passion or your is your discipline <laughs> um because some people think, they believe passion alone is sufficient to clear this examination for for me somehow passion is very short lived like that inspiration and all so i i strongly believe it's the discipline maybe discipline in the sense having a schedule micro schedule sticking to it micro targets these are the ones uh, you know that will ensure that you are in the process and you would reach the goal so i just want you to throw some light on so after having gone through all of these years if i can just look back uh and see what actually got me here mm -hmm. uh i'll say that you have to be sincere that's all i think like you said discipline and everything everything gets added in the in that sincerity part you mm -hmm. have to be sincere to your preparation as simple mm -hmm. as that every mm -hmm. single day you cannot have any excuse you have to constantly remember that you are that you are on a mission right mm -hmm. so whether whether an, an attempt ended badly fine no problem still be sincere if you're giving the exam again be sincere and what does being sincere mean you stick to your schedule you be disciplined mm -hmm. you keep motivating yourself do whatever it takes to be to be motivated mm -hmm. and you don't lose faith in yourself because uh, because in the end if you're that, that, uh, if you're losing faith in yourself it means you have lost you've lost complete uh, you've just given up mm -hmm. right so i think so that's why i told the aspirants that no matter how bad the circumstances feel you know just keep remembering that uh, that life is much bigger i think when you when we remember that you know life is much bigger than any other exam i feel mm -hmm. that it really helps manage the stress mm -hmm. and and when when stress is managed it means your mental health is good and when mental mm -hmm. health is managed it means you are in a position wherein you can study again wherein mm -hmm. you can get your energy up again and mm -hmm. wherein you can give your best Mm -hmm. so if i look back i'll say please be sincere every single day don't be answerable to anyone but just be answerable to yourself mm -hmm. be sincere keep working if it's meant to happen it will happen so uh, when in my last attempt sir you know to, to all the aspirants as well if i would have started thinking that oh this is my last attempt over it would have been the, i because i would have been crushed under the weight of this pressure but uh, one simple exercise that i did was i just stopped thinking about the consequences i took every day as it came you know i was like okay fine today what do i have to do i have to i have to do this i have to revise this this is how i'm planning this is the long term plan etc and then i just did it i i and i did not think anything else when the exam came i did not think oh my god this is the final exam this is my last attempt this is the only chance i have you know i didn't think about all that i said this is a 3 hour paper i have to give and i have studied i'm going to go in and i'm going to try and give it my best that's all so uh, to along with sincerity there is a it is very important to just be slightly emotionally detached use your emotional intelligence build your emotional intelligence so that on the day of the exam and, and even during preparation you are able to make sure that you not only get crushed under the pressure 
but you're also actually able to motivate yourself so that you know even if you're low on knowledge your the sheer intensity with which you approach the entire exam it's enough to get you through because when i actually cleared the exam in my first attempt i had no knowledge it was it was just the sheer confidence and the sheer positivity with which i went that actually got me you know a rank in my first attempt so so this is the most important thing i'll uh, i'll say that uh, you know be brutal be brutal be sincere sincerity will get you to the level of of being a good aspirant of being a good civil servant of the prospect of cracking the exam but be brutal emotionally detached so that you are uh, at least negative uh, detach the negative emotions you know use your positive emotions and uh, use your emotions positively so brutality sincerity and emotional intelligence i feel that these three things if the aspirant can do they'll they'll have a they'll they'll do well for sure yes great and yeah this uh, the guidance from our academy like because you are part of my uh, anthropology main test series hope uh, it played uh, any role in your success uh, like. absolutely so like i said anthropology was a new optional for me i wanted somebody to tell me what mistakes i'm making i was writing answers for the first time so you uh, you really helped me a lot sir and for that i really thank you a lot i have your the test series that i wrote the, qu the quality of questions was good and uh, it just in the end when you write a 3 hour question it just adds to the confidence you used to give very low scores sir but in the end you know it it helped me prepare that okay fine i have to just keep pushing myself so yeah. uh, so that was always there but i think one thing that i want to tell because there are all your students over here one thing that i feel every student of sir must do that sir is very sincere and and is very de dedicated to each and every aspirant right so each and every student of his so make sure that you are communicating with sir you you're letting him know what uh, what problems you are facing in anthropology and use him for uh, to actually reinforce your preparation a very simple example of of this is that when mains was just 10 days away i was still not confident i did not want to i was unsure as to how to best use my time or how to close the anthropology preparation properly so i decided to give a upsc paper the 2020 paper uh, uh, because that was supposed to be a so called tough one an, an unconventional paper so i picked up the paper one of csc 2020 and i wrote but i had just written so i did not know whether uh, it was good or not so i so i went to sir and i said sir i have written this paper i am just 10 days away from mains can you please evaluate it for me so that was never a part of the mains test series as such but uh, sir said oh, yes sure i'll do it and he got back to me in 2 to 3 days and and he gave me feedback and that just the just the fact that i had written a previous year question and it had been evaluated and i had received decent comments that gave me a huge confidence boost so to every person over here know that sir is here for you you know if you know that you have gotten into sir's course use him you know he 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 is really there for you so use him for your benefit and and i'm pretty sure he'll really be able to uh, help you enhance your maximize your chances thank you so much for that feedback <laughs> and yeah utkarsh uh, once again uh, i i heartily congratulate you for all your success thank you and, sir and i hope you will do much much better service to the nation and uh, with all the hope uh, let's sign off and thank you so much good night thank you thank you sir thank you everyone all the best to everyone thank you thank you